Hello and welcome to a, a very blustery day here in beautiful Nova Scotia. Welcome to my channel, The Optimistic Gardener. My name is Steve Farley. Well, it's the end of August. And like me, you're probably basking in the glory of all your harvests coming in. I've just been picking more basil and more tomatoes. Coming out the yin yang, the tomatoes are. And it's great bringing all these tomatoes and, and potatoes and beans and all that different sort of stuff coming in now. Sitting back and thinking, yeah, I've done a really good job um, picking all this or, or growing this veg and my flowers over the, uh, the summer. The beautiful sunflowers, again, testament to that. But September, autumn coming up now, still be picking all the harvests, but I've got to be thinking about next year. A good gardener obviously got to think a future, you know, the next season and uh, what we're going to be doing. And I've got a few jobs that you could be doing in September that I guarantee if you do those jobs, they will pay you back and save you money in the next year. So why don't you sit back and I'll give you a few of these jobs to help you save money and get top flowers, top plants, top veg next year. So one of the easiest ways you can actually save money is by saving seed. This is kale. I planted this last, last summer. And um, funnily enough, I'll just, I'll just left it in. I, I have no idea why I did leave it in, but um, I left it in over the winter. Um, it actually survived and produced me loads of nice leaves early on in the springtime. And then I thought, well, I'm, I'm running out of this particular type of kale. Why don't I just um, let it flower? And I also thought to myself, I'll let it flower because um, that'll bring in some pollinators for the, for the other plants around here. Um, so I let it flower, flower brilliantly, um, but now it's got all of these seeds. And there are literally probably thousands in there. As you can see, maybe you can see, there's the seeds now. Perfectly, all I need to do is get um, a plastic bag or a brown bag and just, in fact, I'll go and get one and show you. So I've got a bit of a freezer bag here. It could be um, any old plastic bag, really, as long as it's clean. Could be a, a brown paper bag. They're really good. And all we're gonna do is literally cut off one of the stems and sort of give it a, each one a, a crush so that they're opening up the actual pods themselves. Now, at the moment, there's lots of pods still in there, but as you can see in the bottom, there's also lots of seeds. So there, I mean, that's more than enough actual um, kale seeds than I need next year myself. But a fair amount of these you can do and then save these for a good five years in, you know, keep going. All you've got to do is seal the bag up, obviously name it, make sure you've got on there, you know, what type of kale, etc. Store it in a cool, dry place. And you can do this with, over there, as you can see, um, believe it or not, that's a lettuce butter crunch. Um, beautiful lettuce that I've been, I've been growing this year. And I thought I'd leave, again, those two there to, um, to flower. It's amazing, actually, how big they grow, isn't it? So they're flowering and they're gonna go in, into seed. Um, the coriander over in the corner there, that every year, I mean, that I've already spoken about that. You've got the, the coriander or cilantro leaves throughout the season. Then they great beautiful flowers, um, which brings in all the pollinators to the, around the plants. And then they grow their seeds. And those seeds, you know, are brilliant crushed um, in Indian dishes in, in the kitchen, obviously. And, and again, you can save a load of those coriander seeds because coriander grows, that coriander patch there regrows every single year because obviously a lot of the seeds um, drop themselves down there. But you can, again, easy as that, take a load of seeds, store them, and you've got them for next year. Lots of your plants, your tomatoes, your best chilies, all of those plants, beans, um, 
Over there, as you can see, that the runner beans are in, in full flower there, but I'll leave a few of those towards the end of the season to grow their proper bean pods, fully mature, brown up, and then there you go. I've got um, seeds for next year. It's really easy and, you know, relatively quick, and it will save you money. And you get a chance to choose the best plants as well, don't you? Because you know which plant performed the best, just let it go on a little bit, flower, jobs are good. Un. That's tip number one. So for my second tip on how to save money next year by doing jobs right now and you know, throughout autumn, is to get composting. All your different plants, whether it be the, the, uh, the peas that I've just harvested and pulled out, or all the different veg that you're harvesting and soon be going over, you'll be pulling that out. The summer perennials in your flower beds. What do you do with those plants? If you're not composting, you need to get composting. And I'll keep going on about it. I'm lucky enough, I've got a bit of space for a, a few bins, but even just a small little area at the back of your garden, get all your, uh, chop all your plants up nice and, and small, put them all in there and you'll have a, a nice bit of compost next year. That will save you money and, and get you better plants throughout the year, whether you use it as a compost or, or as a mulch, etc. Because here I'm just tidying up. I've got some beautiful, lovely compost there. It's gonna go on my, for my autumn mulching for some of the beds that are, I've gone over now, ready for next year. And I'm busy throwing everything on there getting all, all, as much um, green stuff and brown stuff into my compost as possible. Ah, I hear you say, but I haven't got room to make any compost bins. It's all right for you with your, your big plot and your big bins everywhere, I haven't got the room. What about trying a bit of trench composting? Now, I tried this last year. I did a bit of trench composting last year. What I did was basically just dug a trench all the way along there, dug it out about a foot deep, and then dumped a load of kitchen waste and just some of the, the green stuff that I'd pulled out from all around the garden, dumped it in there, reburied it um, with, the, with the earth again, and just let it rot down over the winter. There's a video up on the screen on the, on the full process on how I did it, but looking at the plants this year, They've done fantastically, a lot better than the other side of the trellis here, the ones on that side. So, get trench composting. If you haven't got the room, you've only got a small garden, dig a few trenches out where you're going to put, you know, your plants, your vegetables or your flowers. Ditch a load of waste in there, garden waste, um, kitchen waste, cover it back over, and then come planting time, you'll have real good um, enriched compost, earth, ready for your plants to plant in. So, I can't recommend it enough. Get compost in, use all of that stuff you're gonna soon be pulling out from your veg beds and, your, and perennials, and get that circle of life going so you can put it onto your, your plants next year. Save money by not having to buy as much compost and having better, juicier, lovelier flowers, juicier vegetables. It's just fantastic. So, to the more non-vegetable sort of area of my garden and to your garden. Behind me, as you can see, um, it's in mid flower on one side and not so much on the other, but I've got some pink flocks going and um, I'm quite happy with the sort of this late summer garden that's going on. The, the, the beautiful black eyed Susans are, are looking great against the Liatris and the, and the sunflowers are coming up. And I'm really quite pleased. I've been developing this for the last few years. I chopped down this big tree here. I don't particularly like chopping down trees, but it was, you know, shading this whole area and, and taking away the moisture, which is why this year, this area, I think, has really sort of sprouted up really well and flowering because it's been able to get more moisture. But if you look, it's very lopsided. And also, there's lots and lots of Liatris. It's starting to become too many and too many Black-Eyed Susan. So, another good way of saving money now, um, or doing some jobs now that will save you money next year. So, look at your garden 
and start thinking what plants can I move to other areas? What can't, plants can I split? So obviously lots of your herbaceous perennials, most of them all you've got to do is get a spade, stick it right down the middle of the two of them, uh, of the plant, split it in half and you've got two plants or three plants or four plants. So there's lots of plants I want to move. So the big um, aster type daisies, I think, uh, that are really tall over that side, I want to move them to my actually brand new area that I, I made this year, but I haven't got the plants for, over in the orchard. So I'm going to take all those out, move them to the orchard, and then I'm going to take a load of the black-eyed Susan and move them and split them and move them to this side so I get more of a, a symmetrical look between the two, so it's more balanced, for want of a better phrase. The same with the Liatris, but what I'm doing is I'm splitting the plants and instead of having to go out and buy plants, I'm, uh, I'm going to split them. Now you can do that now or in the next few weeks when they start to sort of, the, the, the flowering starts to go down a bit, I'm going to move them then. Or you can do things like take a photograph now and look at it and think, right, that's not the way I want it. And then start to identify the plants that you want to move next spring. And you can do that by um, things like just getting a marker and say you've got a load of white markers and just sticking them right next to the plants that you want to move. Or you can just get a load of coloured tags and, and just tie them to the actual plants that you want to move. And then that way you've, you're not going to forget because you know you, you walk past there and think, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to move that. And then next thing you know, you've completely forgotten about it. But if you put yourself a nice tag or a marker next to that plant, you're going to know, ah, oh, I want you to move that. And you're going to move it to the next area. Like I said, you don't have to do it now, but the autumn is a good time to do it because temperatures are starting to come down, but the earth is still nice and warm. And if you chop the, you know, move the plant, chop it down, which I'll do another video on that in the next couple of weeks, because I've got some lovely, as well as the black eyed Susans, I've got some beautiful daylilies either side of the start of the arch there and um, they're absolutely stunning in the summer, but they're getting too big now. So I'm gonna split them into two, three, maybe even four, and move them around the plants. So all of a sudden I've got another four plants I didn't even have to pay for. Brilliant. So there you go. That's tip number three. Have a look around your garden, label them where you think, ah, oh, that's not in the right place, or I can split that, and then label them and then you can split them either now or in the springtime. So there we go. Three tips for saving yourself some money next year by doing a few jobs now. Now you may think, oh, that was pretty obvious, but you know, a lot of people, especially in the veg game, are not taking seeds and not saving those seeds. All you've got to do is save that one plant and you'll get a multitude of seeds for the next few years easily. Composting, you know, it's that thing, yeah, can I actually be bothered with doing it? But honest, it pays back in spades of the quality of, of, of compost you get. And then obviously it doesn't cost you any money, just a little bit of tiny work and it really does pay you back. And this one here, splitting your plants, having a look, but the, th the, the trick with it is to look at it when it's all in flower, when it's really sort of, all the areas are in their fullness so you can sort of gauge the size of the things that are there and then think, well, I'm going to move that or I'm going to split that or I'm going to take a cutting from that. So there you go, three tips. Get on with it in the next few weeks and you'll be laughing all the way to the bank next year. Jobs are good. Un'.